Hi everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another video in Mail Art Month. Today is day eight, and I am using the Surprise Boxes stamp set from Mama Elephant. There, there are some coordinating dies, but I won't be using them today. Instead, I'll build a scene with some masking. And I'm also going to be using the Simple Friends Bubbles stamps and die. You can see there's like three large stamps, like three groupings, and then the die cuts out all of those at the same time. It'll make more sense when we get there. The first thing I did was I stamped the images I wanted to use and just cut them out. This is out of just some cheap computer paper. And I did that so I could move them around and kind of figure out exactly where I want them on my card. I decided to use the bear and the bunny. And I'm also going to be stamping the roll of wrapping paper and also the spool of ribbon. And this is going to create a scene with some different heights. You've got that bear that's a little higher up than the bunny, and then you've got the, the paper and the ribbon down below. Decided to make it a portrait card. I thought that would fit my scene a little bit better. And I positioned it in the center of uh, another piece of uh, scratch paper that's cut to A2 size, just so I knew where it would be. And then I prepped a mask. So when you're doing kind of like a one layer card or a scene where you want the images to be overlapping and you want them to look like one image is behind the other, for example, I want the bear to look, look like it's behind the bunny. The way you do that is you stamp the bunny first, mask it, and then stamp the bear. So I have my mask prepared and I'm going to stamp on my watercolor paper. I'm doing no line watercoloring today and the watercolor paper that I've chosen to use is from Fabriano. This is the hot pressed Artistico extra white. And I chose hot press because it's a much more smooth texture. So I think it really lends itself to no line watercoloring because you can get a really smooth line on the edges of your shapes and it really kind of helps define the area. So like I said, I'm stamping my bunny first. I stamped the rabbit in some antique linen distress ink. Antique linen distress ink is my preferred color of ink for no line watercoloring because the line still stays pretty dark. I stamped it twice so I would really see it but also it does fade once you start painting it. So I masked my bunny and then I positioned the bear stamp and I'm going to stamp the bear in that same spot. And I'll stamp the bear twice so that I get a really nice defined line that will help me as I'm painting. And then I'm going to remove that mask. And then you can see the magic of masking. It really does make it look like the bunny is in front of the bear now. I added that roll of wrapping paper down in front, and then I'm gonna add the spool of ribbon as well. So like I said, I'm doing no line watercoloring today, and I'm going actually going to speed up the painting process when we get to it, but if you are interested in seeing all of this painting in real time, I shared this video live for the members of my YouTube channel members membership. So if you want to see this painting and this card and envelope in its entirety in real time with all of my commentary and the, the mishaps that happen along the way, um, there's a link down below to join my membership. You can join for as little as $5 a month and you'll get two live streams per month. A big thank you to all of my members. I appreciate you all so much. And it was really fun having you guys there while I was painting this card and envelope. So here we go. I'm just going to speed up the video footage from here on out and you can see all the painting. You tell me you're scared. you think and I know it's hard yeah I know it's rough but we'll make it through and I'll back you up Yeah. 
wherever you're going, I'm going to. I'll follow you through the black and the blue. Whatever the mountain will climb to the next, honey. painting, I'm moving on to my greetings. I decided to just stamp the group of greetings at the top of the stamp set, and I'm stamping them all together in black ink. I'm using one of my favorite black inks, which is Versafine Onyx Black. Um, generally, it does a really, really solid job of stamping, but I did end up stamping this twice just because some of the the lines of where the ink pad was were showing in the stamping since since this is such a solid you know image you can see there's still kind of like some little white little spots on the black areas not a problem at all i cleaned those up with a black marker um, as long as the areas around the words were okay i decided to just clean up the more solid areas where a little bit of that not perfect stamping was more visible I then used that die, which was brilliant. It lined up perfectly on these stamps. And then I ran that through my die cutting machine and I'm left with six little talk bubbles with greetings ready to go on cards. Since I cut out six, I decided to use two of them on my card. I was planning to only use one, but you know, since I had two and it kind of lent itself to the design, I decided to use two of those greetings. I put some all to new um, ultra thick tape on the back of my watercolor piece. I'm not sure if it's ultra thick. This is only like the half inch wide, but it's super, super strong adhesive and it really sticks the watercolor paper down to my card base. I then put some foam adhesive on the back of my little talk bubbles, position them over top of the bear and the bunny, and then that card is finished. I'm moving on to the envelope now and I'm using this watercolor paper, which is 90 pound watercolor paper because I'm making my envelope out of this paper and I want it to be really easy to fold. 
So I'm cutting my cardstock or my watercolor paper to eight and one quarter inch square. That's what the guide says on my one, two, three punch board to make an envelope that fits an A2 card. So I, I put that in my one, two, three punch board, rotated around and scored and punched this to create the envelope. If you need more instruction on how to create an envelope using the one, two, three punch board, um, I've done multiple videos on it in the past. You could probably just do a quick search for it. So for the envelope, for the top flap, I decided I wanted it to be a bright red shade. So I actually grabbed my bottle of Distress Reinker and I picked Candied Apple. This is one of the red shades I used when I was painting the boxes on the card. So I wanted this entire flap to be red and I wanted it to match those postage stamps. You'll see that postage stamp in a minute here. And this Candied Apple matched perfectly. It worked out so, so well. After I uh, painted that once, I did go over it one more time just to kind of smooth it out. I let that dry or used my heat tool to speed along the drying and then peeled off that tape. I then uh, masked off the other flaps. I'm just going to work on the main panel of the envelope. I used cardstock to protect the flaps just in case I splashed any water and then used some blue painter's tape right around the edges. I then used picked raspberry reinker and I painted the entire envelope. And I'm using the reinker for this because it's such a large area and it kind of seemed like it would be a lot of smushing ink pads down on the surface if I was to use just the mini cubes for this. I used a little bit of H mahogany to kind of darken up the edges. And then I realized I really just wanted more of that picked raspberry, just wanted to intensify the color on the edges. So I added that really messily right around the edges. And then I started like bringing in a clean brush with no additional color on it, just water and kind of pull that in from the edges. And I'm also doing some kind of swirls and wavy movements with my brush to kind of get some texture on this watercolor paper. I also brought in some candied apple just around the edges, just so it would bring in that color. And I hit that with my heat tool to dry the entire area. And now I'm going to paint on a bow. This is going to make it look like a present that's been wrapped. I thought it would be so fun to sort of mimic that gift wrap that's on the card. So I'm planning to have my bow be more near the bottom of the envelope. So I've painted on a shape so that it's kind of a little wider at the top and then um, comes in almost like an hourglass into the to where I want the bow to be. I then switched brushes to a smaller brush and painted on some loops. Now if you wanted to keep this really simple and just paint these loops on like this, add some tails and call it a day, you most definitely could. But I was feeling a little extra and I wanted to add a shading onto the bow and also uh, like the loops and the tails on my bow. So I grabbed some aged mahogany. I also used a reinker for this. And with a smaller brush, I just started to shade in some of those areas that would be darker on a bow like this. So I added quite a bit of shadow just at the very uh, kind of center area of the bow. And then for the loops, I added the shading coming out from the center. And then I also created like where the loop folds over. So I just added some more shading to all of that. I did want to let all of you in the United States know that USPS just yesterday uh, hiked up the prices on postage. So forever stamps are now worth 68 cents. They were 66, they're now 68 cents. And also there's been a, a few increases on international postage. Um, as far as mailing within the US, I think, you know, when you're mailing your letters, that is the only um, change is just that there's, you know, the a, a first ounce is now 68 cents instead of 66. But if you're mailing from the US to other countries, there are some additional charges that have changed. So I've updated my postage chart. So if you want to download the new updated version, um, it's linked down below. I have a date in the bottom corner so you can verify uh, the date of your postage chart. 
So I finished up that bow, did a little more shading up there on the top of that ribbon just to get it smooth, and then I added on my postage. So here's that stamp. This is a brand new stamp that just came out, and I wanted to match the colors of that stamp. In fact, that was the inspiration for the colors of my card and envelope today. I put those postage stamps on, and then I assembled my envelope. Used a little bit of this tape from Lawn Fawn, and I just put some adhesive on the bottom flap of the envelope, folded in the sides, and then folded up that bottom flap. And that cre basically creates the envelope. I'm using my bone folder just to crease those folds a little bit. And then I'm going to start on the name and address. Now, there's a, an explanation for this. <laughs> I decided while I was creating this card and envelope, um, I was talking to my members that were uh, watching on the live stream and I was like what I want to do and I decided I wanted to give this card and envelope to my friend Jennifer we're going to see each other this week we're traveling together um, just for like a really really short little trip and I'm going to see her so I thought you know what? I'm going to hand this to her in person so I'm going to put on a fake address <laughs> and just to be funny I decided to have it be the address to Magic Kingdom theme park at Walt Disney World. <laughs> We're actually going to Disney World for a few days. So um, I thought this would be really funny. She has no idea that I'm doing this. In fact, I'm just going to hand her the envelope and be like, surprise. And she's going to be like, what is this address? <laughs> and I'll have to explain to her, oh, that's Magic Kingdom. <laughs> anyway. So in order to protect this envelope, I mean, it's not going through the mail, but there is a lot of paint on it, a lot of ink. And I wanted to make sure it wouldn't transfer to our fingers or when we handled the envelope. So I used some uh, Tim Holtz Distress Micro Glaze, and I just went over all those areas. And like usual, I did not go over the postage stamps, even though this won't be going through the mail. But what this does is it just protects that area and it kind of makes it water resistant, waterproof, seals it, makes it much more permanent than if I were to leave it on its own. After I applied that with a mini round blending foam, I then balled up my paper towel and buffed that in to the watercolor paper. And that really kind of seals off all of that ink. So here is my finish card and envelope. This set is adorable. I love pink and red together. So Valentine's is just perfect for me. I love it so much. Thanks so much for watching today. Uh, like I mentioned before, if you would like um, a little bit more instruction, uh, the slow down video for how I painted the bear and the bunny and, and the envelope, check out my membership down below in the video description. Uh, it starts at $5 a month and I'd love to have you. And for those of you who've signed up, thanks so much for supporting my YouTube channel and making it possible for me to continue doing what I'm doing here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in another video very soon. Thank you.